Welcome to the International Graduate Student Summer Webinar. We have speakers here today to talk to you about what you need to know before you get started with your grad graduate studies. So before we get started with the content of the presentation, I want to acknowledge that McMaster University is what bringing us all together today. Even though we're not on campus right now, we want to recognize the land that McMaster University sits on and its location on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee Nation and within the lands protected by the Dish With One Spoon Wampum Agreement. So Canada has a very rich indigenous history and when you eventually arrive at McMaster University, I encourage you to explore this history and um, look around the campus for the indigenous arts and um, sculptures and just the indigenous presence available. We will get the presentation started with a few introductions of the presenters today. So my name is Yufei and I am the International Graduate Student Coordinator and I work at the School of Graduate Studies. Andrea? Hi everyone, thanks Yufei. Welcome, my name is Andrea Cole and I'm a coordinator in the School of Graduate Studies. My role is recruitment, retention, and diversity. Thank you, Andrea. Anna? Hi everyone, my name is Anna Prera and I'm the lead coordinator for international students in the Student Success Center. Uh, I work with students on their UHIP uh, programming and events throughout the year. Thank you, Anna. JC? Hi everyone, uh, I'm JC. I'm one of the co presidents of the International Graduate Student Association and I'm also a PhD student in, phys in the physics department. Thank you, JC. So the four of us today will walk you through the presentation, as well as there are staff from in the background who are here to answer your questions as well. Today's presentation will cover topics surrounding pre-departure, getting settled in Hamilton, the School of Graduate Studies, working in Canada, health and wellness, community resources, and finally, questions and answer about um, topics that we, might, we may not be able to touch on during the presentation. So before we get started, I want to acknowledge that uh, McMaster does have an immigration consultant and this person is not with us at this presentation right now. So if you have immigration related questions, we will uh, provide you with a way to contact this person and I will introduce him um, in the next slide. Um, I also want to acknowledge that we just received an update from the Canadian government yesterday. So that was less than 24 hours ago. Um, I would like to share this update because this is a, some very good news for incoming international students. So first of all, the government will prioritize study permit processing for students who have submitted a complete application online. And for students who have submit, submitted their student permit application before um, September 15th, 2020, the time that they spent studying will be counted towards their postgraduate post-graduation work permit. This is, a, this is a good news comparing to before yesterday where you must have approved study permit for the time to count towards your post-graduation work permit. And if you have submitted your study permit application but you're missing some documents due to um, your local visa office closures, there is also a two-stage approval process um, where if you pass the first stage, your time st spent studying will also be counted towards your postgrad work permit. Please note, this is uh, not a travel update and this is not an indication of whether if your study permit application will eventually be accepted. This update addresses the, your concerns over um, the postgraduate work permit time. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have an in-house immigration consultant at McMaster University. His na name is Anthony Chea. And for more information about, inf about immigration related topics, and if you have any question about your personal immigration 
um, processes or um, study permit removals, uh, renewal, renewals, and uh, about your family coming here with you, please contact Anthony directly at immigration at mcmaster.ca. He is not at the webinar today and we will not be able to answer detailed immigration questions. Okay, so going back to our planned uh, content, I will start with pre-departure. And I recognize that there is still a travel restriction as of today. And the current travel is restrictions indicate that you will need to have a valid study permit or be approved for a study permit on or before March 18th. Of course, this may change between now and your eventual arrival. So this is why we want to give you information about pre-departure, even though we're, we're unsure of whether if you're able to arrive yet. And even if you meet this exemption or future exemptions, the border agent may still deny entry. So please keep in mind that the government guidelines may be updated and may change. And it's very important for you, for you to apply for your study permit as soon as possible because your arrival is very dependent on the acceptance of your study permit application. And if you meet the travel exemptions uh, outlined in the previous slide, you may also want to request a letter from your faculty or from your program. This letter may outline the requirement for you to be in Hamilton and confirm your enrollment and outline any other reason for you to travel. So having this letter at the border may be very helpful, but also it does not guarantee travel. It's just a tool that for you to show um, the border agent and hopefully the border agent will agree with the reasons outlined in the letter. In addition to the letter, you will also need to provide a quarantine plan. So we do have quarantine um, opportunities on campus, but we don't have ex the details yet. So as soon as um, we have the information from Housing and Conference Services at McMaster, we will make sure to email you the information so you can sign up. You can also quarantine at your own place of residence if you already have family here or already have a private place of residence at, in Hamilton. And the same guidelines apply for both methods of quarantine. So this may include, this includes, you may not leave your place of residence for 14 days. So you cannot go outside to interact with people or buy food or buy medication. You will, um, you will need to show the border agent that you have a way to stay quarantined and have access to food while you're inside. There are many um, other guidelines and detailed explanations on the Canadian government website, and you can find it through the link on the screen. And when you're ready to travel, um, when you go to the airport, there are things that um, you should bring to the airport. So first of all, a valid passport or travel documents, a letter of introduction the visa office sent you when they approved your study permit. So this letter has your permit reference number, which is used to issue your actual study permit at the border. A copy of your valid letter of acceptance from McMaster, Prove that you have enough funds to support you or yourself during your stay in Canada. And letter of reference or any other documents the visa office told you to bring. In addition, you will need either a valid electronic travel authorization uh, or an ETA or a temporary resident visa, a TRV. So if you have a valid ETA, it will be linked to the passport you use to apply for your study permit. And of course, during um, COVID, during um, our current health, uh, health situation, you should bring your quarantine plan. And um, if your department is able to provide a letter, that letter as well. Please make sure that you carry these items um, with you at all times, including valuable papers, cash, and your traveler's check and don't put them in your checked luggage. And now JC will share uh, more information about what you are expected to experience when you get to Hamilton. Thanks, Yufei. 
Okay, so so from now on, we'll assume that you get to Toronto uh, and, and you are at Toronto Airport. So the first thing you'll have to do is to get to Hamilton. The f easiest way from Pearson Airport is to get on public transit. Um, so those buses are big green buses. They're called Go Transit. Uh, you can't really miss them. And to go to Hamilton, you need to get on number 40 from P Pearson Airport to Hamilton Go Center. And there's another one that goes another direction. So don't get on that one. Make sure you go on the one that goes to Hamilton. Uh, the fare will be around 1270. That might be a little difference, um, but around $13 would be what you will be paying. Um, so this is the cheapest option. It might not be very convenient if you have a lot of luggage so that you have to decide if you can end all just going on the bus. Uh, if you think that it's easier to go with a taxi or Uber, you'll have that opportunity as well. Uh, we've checked with Pearson Airport, if, even with uh, the COVID situation going on, you will be able to get on a taxi. Um, just make sure that you wear uh, face, face covering and you practice uh, physical distancing. Just, just make sure you take all the safety precautions. Uh, we were also advised that as soon as you get through immigration and you get your luggage, uh, if you have nothing to do in the airport, they will ask you to go outside and wait outside for either the go bus or the taxi that you will be going to Hamilton with. The other option that sometimes people do or use is that you will get directly to Hamilton Airport. Um, so in that case, it's a very small airport. Uh, and the public transit is not uh, is very limited there. So from there, we definitely recommend you get a taxi. It will be I don't know what the price will be, but it will be cheaper than from Toronto because this is this is really close to um, your final destination. And again, uh, make sure you you wear uh, fa uh, face masks and you practice uh, physical distancing once you get to Toronto or Hamilton. Okay, so now once you. Once you are in Hamilton, uh, what you have to do is you have to go to your place of quarantine and you cannot leave your place for 14 days. So you cannot go for groceries. You cannot exit your apartment to get medications or anything like that. So you need to make sure in your plan that once you are in that quarantine place, you're not, you will not be exiting that place. So you need to make sure you can have food delivered, have your medications with you. Uh, just make sure everything you plan for everything. You don't want anything after seven days and you have to figure it out. So make sure you have everything figured out for 14 days. Um, if you arrive in September, there's a couple of things that you need to know. The first thing is that uh, the Monday, uh, September 7th is a national holiday. So McMaster will be closed that day. And honestly, pretty much everything is closed, especially on that one. Um, this, you, you won't be able to get groceries. Um, um, so that's just something that you need, uh, you need to know. And usually the transit will be running, but it might be on a Sunday schedule. So there are just less of them. In terms of the weather, um, in September, it can be really all around the place in Ontario. Um, the average is be high is between 20 and 25 degrees C, and uh, the low will be around 11. But honestly, if it's a really sunny day, it might get up to 30, you don't know. So just be sure you kind of plan for any kind of weather ranging from 10 to 30. Um, in terms of how to go about housing, so I'm just gonna give you a little bit of like couple uh, points, but there's a really good housing webinar that is pre-recorded and is available on YouTube. That's on the link right now, on the slide right now. Um, where, where they really go into details about how to go around housing. So if, if, there's, if you need information about housing, just watch that video. Uh, in terms of, is there anything on campus for grad students? The answer is no, there, there's no permanent on campus graduate student residence. Um, the housing in Canada is really often based on uh, 12 months or there's a lease for 12 months. So you, and it, it's a bounding, it's a binding contract. So it's really hard to get out of it. So once you sign those 12 months, you usually have to stay for 12 months. So just make sure you really like the place, the landlord, you, you're happy with your landlord uh, and everything because you, you're kind of stuck in that situation for 12 months. Uh, the location will be important. Um, Try to plan in terms of, of transit. If you're, even if you're not really close to Hamilton, you can't walk, make sure you're 
close to the lines that go to campus because you don't really want to waste 45 minutes in the morning just to get to uh, campus. Um, I mean, I would personally not. I would. I wouldn't want to do that. Um, I'm. I'm close by, and it's easy to get on campus even if you live downtown. But just make sure you leave close to a bus stop. Um, and also, yeah, be aware of scams. They are bad landlords. Landlords, sorry. So make sure make sure you you're aware of them and and be careful when you sign your lease. Um, the other thing that you'll have to do really quickly is to set up banking in Canada. Uh, we're not endorsing any bank uh, and, and they are all regulated by the same laws. So technically, most of the time, the offers are really similar. They will, they will differ a little bit, but they're not going to be significantly different. So usually it comes really down to the location of the banks. So there's one bank, the RBC, that is directly on campus. So that can be uh, convenient. Um, then close to campus, there will be CIBC, TD Bank, Scotia Bank, Pace Credit Union. There's another one that is well known that is BMO. Um, I don't know how far BMO is from campus though. And um, yeah, essentially just go on their website and try to check. There's usually uh, incentives for newcomers to Canada. There's usually a plan for that. And usually I think it can get you out of the fees for six months a year. It depends on the, off on the offer at that time. So it, honestly, just go on their website and see what looks best to you. Uh, but we're not endorsing any one of them. The most common way to pay here uh, will be debit, credit. Uh, you can also pay in cash. Um, be mindful on the debit and credit card of the limit transaction and how those credit card works. Uh, and also, um, if you take a student offer from the banks, they usually have uh, less fees but sometimes they have they will have they'll have re more restrictions on them so just make sure you know essentially when you get a card make sure you know what the limits are and what what's in it's important to know what you can do with that card or not uh, to open a bank account you'll need a passport study permit and a proof of address so those can be anything ranging from copy of lease or the electricity internet phone bill that you may have gotten already If you want to try to budget and try to define what will be the cost of living, uh, that can be kind of challenging, but there's a really good website that's called expatistant.com. Uh, and uh, the information is pretty up to date and you can go on that website and try to see how much it will cost you to live in Hamilton. In terms of the tips I can give you, uh, first you should check the payment schedule. Um, when are you going to get the scholarship money? If you're TAing, when do you get the TA money? Uh, for example, I'm, I was used in Europe to be paid at the end of the month. Uh, here in Canada, the TA money you get every um, two weeks. So it, it's different. You just need to know, and it's helpful to just see that schedule because now you know when the money will get into your bank account. Um, and also try to take advantage of student discounts. So for example, the Presto, which is a card that you can get to get on the Go bus. So the bus we talked about to go to Hamilton. Uh, but um, you can use the Presto card also to just take the bus in Hamilton or just the Go bus to go anywhere around Hamilton. So you get discounts on those. Just mention your student Mac. Uh, you can get discounts on in grocery stores. For example, I'm pretty sure for Tino's on Tuesday, you get 10% discount. So you may as well take advantage of those discounts. And then finally, when you do an activity or you go to an event, uh, make sure you mention your student. You might You might get something out of it. Um, let's talk about life in Hamilton, Canada. So there's, again, there's another webinar that was recorded about living in Hamilton and in Canada that you can find the link on the slide. Um, there's a lot in that webinar that to deal with, uh, the Canadian, the Canadian culture, uh, what to expect when you live in Hamilton. There's a lot of information about health, wellness, and safety, and also what's available on campus. So I really recommend you watch watching that uh, webinar. You might experience culture shock once you get to Hamilton, and it will vary. Uh, the, the, it will vary from one person to the other. It depends where you come from, how different the culture is. Uh, but just know that this is a normal reaction, and we all go through uh, some kind of cultural shock when we come to a new country. When I came to Canada, I had to adjust to a couple of things. Um, I always take that example that people here tend to have. 
their dinners really early compared to what I had in Europe. Uh, you just have to get used to it. Having a burger at six is not something that uh, bothers people here. I, I was really, it, it was hard for me at first, but now I'm really used to it and it's fine. So just that's just one example. And it, it seems kind of funny, but in the end, there are, there are cultural differences and you'll have to get uh, used to it and just, um, just know that that can happen to you. If, if that happens to you, my first recommendation is just take, to, take the time you need to adapt and adjust. You don't have to deal with all of the differences all at once. Just take one by one, take your time, and just know this is a process that you have to go through anyway, and just try to do it step by steps. And eventually you'll just get used to it. Honestly, it doesn't, to, for me, it didn't take that much time. I take more time for you, but it's not, it's not, it's not terrible. Um, and, and you can you can really work your way and just get used to those differences. Um, one way you can deal with it is you can talk about your experience with either your friend or family if they're here, um, especially if you have family that can be really helpful because they probably went through the same process when they came here. Um, and I will talk about that in the next slide, but this year uh, the School of Grad started a program called International Grad Navigators and they can be a very useful resource. Uh, for adjusting to the culture. So I'll come back to that in a moment. The other people that can help you are uh, the student success coach. You can uh, book appointment with, uh, with him and you will be able to help you um, kind of navigate uh, through the different changes and everything. There's also the student wellness center that can help you in that case. Um, the other advice that I can give you is uh, try to participate in events and meet other international students. So. This year will be special because we, especially in the fall, we won't have any events that are, that are going to be in person, but we will have events that are online. So try to connect and uh, try to go to these events and, you know, talk with people, try to see what, what is available on campus by just going to those, I mean, going those events, logging in those events and just try to participate and meet new people. That's a really good way to make friends, especially if, you, if you're just coming on your own here and, and again just be very mindful of your mental and physical health so if you're not doing well just you, you have to acknowledge it and and you should really try to figure out a way that can you know find the people that can help you that's that's my biggest piece of advice try to find somebody that can help you or at least refer you to somebody else that can that will be able to help you So talking about the, inter the International Grand Navigator. So that's a new program that was started this year. Um, this is a, a great program that should be really helpful to deal with culture shock and all the different um, things that you'll have to adapt to. So it's, it's a program in which you will be uh, kind of paired with an international student that has been here for at least one term. And the way it will work, uh, I think, is you will be able, you'll be paired with somebody either from the same country you're from or from at least a very similar culture. So when we were talking about that cultural shock, that person is really likely to have experienced the same, at least not maybe the shock, but at least the same differences. So you can talk about it with him and say, oh, here people seem to do that that way. Is it normal? How, do you, how did you adjust to it? And so that will be a really nice way that you can you can adjust a little bit quick more more quickly, uh, and so the goals for the programs are to ease the transition period and to create a sense of belonging. Uh, you can you can build that uh, relation with that person, and if you start being friends with that person, you can meet other people. So that's a really good way to just you know get in, involved in that community. Um, it will also decrease the feeling of loneliness and isolation. Um, and as, as I was saying before, it will address the unique culture needs that you'll have because you will share that with that person. So for more information, there's a link on, on the slide and you will need to sign up to that program to be paired with the International Grad Navigators. So we had, I know the International Grad Navigators that are already in Canada have been, we have already signed up, I'll be one of them, uh, but now you will have to sign up so that we can be paired together. Yeah, I think that's about it for me. Great, thank you, JC. Um, so I will talk about School of Grad Studies and just the kind of services um, from the School of Grad Studies. 
So grad studies is a central area that kind of oversees the administration portion of your experience. So for example, admission, graduation, PhD defenses, rules and regulations, and uh, the grad calendar. We work with your faculties and your programs to make sure everything is running. And we also have a very great Grad stu graduate student life team that Andrea will later tell you about. Uh, myself, I am the International Graduate Student Coordinator. I am also in this department and I connect with these uh, the other staff members in this department closely in order to support you. So at Pink Master, we're located in Gilmore Hall in room 212. Uh, none of us are there right now. So if you have any general questions, please feel free to ask to email askgrad at mcmaster.ca. Getting ready for McMaster. So here are some of the things that you would normally do before uh, you arrive at McMaster. So um, the first thing would be activating your Mac ID and email. So you may notice that all of our email are going to the email account that you signed up during your application process. But going forward, especially after September, all of our communications will go to your McMaster email. So please make sure that you have it running. Um, upload your student card, student card photo. So we're not sure if you're able to get your physical card yet because there's really uh, not a lot of need for them if you don't arrive in Canada, but it's still helpful for you to upload your photo to the system so we can use it when um, during exams to confirm your identity and for um, your teachers to know what, uh, who you are, what you look like, so it's easier for them to take attendance for your classes. And on a, on a similar note, please update your personal information in, our, in your student accounts, in your mosaic, just so we have the best way to reach you um, during your studies. And if you're in Canada, please set up your banking information as well, especially your, if you're receiving funding or have TA ship or RA roles. For more information, you can visit the website. Registration. So, um, for many students, in the enrollment period has already started. Um, and for many others, your program may have additional requirements before you're able to enroll. So if you cannot enroll yet, or if you have questions about what you need to enroll, please check your program. This year, on-time registration is open until August 4th. And after August 4th, you may still register, but it, um, it will be late registration. There are three terms in the academic year. So the so fall term from September, starting in September, the winter term starting in January, and the summer term, spring summer term starting in May. You, may, it, you must enroll in at least one course for each term you are at, at McMaster. If you're actually not taking an academic course, so for example, if you're working on your research, if um, if you're working on something else with your supervisor, you must enroll in a placeholder course. So this information will be available from your program um, in greater detail so you know exactly what to do. And inter enrolling in that placeholder course is just to indicate to, to the system that you're still um, a McMa uh, active McMaster student. And again, this is a very more normal practice and your program will have information for you. And there's a link to the registration uh, page on the slide and also all the links that we've been sharing throughout the slides are in the chat box. Tuition and fees. So the deadline to pay your tuition for the fall term is September 25th, 2020. And the deadline to pay your tuition for the winter term is January 25th, 2020. So it's still uh, two months away. You don't need to pay your tuition right away. Bank transfer is the most convenient way to pay your tuition and because it's secure and is recommended by our student accounts team. And there are links available if you want to learn more about paying your tuition from outside of Canada and how it works to um, start 
from uh, start remotely and paying your tuition at the same time. If you have any questions about paying tuition or your student account, please refer to student services at services at mcmaster.ca. And there, a link is also available for more information about tuition and fees. Starting remotely, of course, so because of um, COVID and current health concerns, you may not be able to arrive in Canada to set up your bank account uh, in order uh, for, the, for the fall term. If you start your program remotely, there will be changes to how your scholarship and funding will be distributed for the September term. If you have sufficient scholarship funds from your funding package, they will be transferred to offset tuition and supplementary fees for the fall term. So you don't have to f find a way to get the money and then transfer it back to peer tuition. Your scholarship funds will be transferred directly to your student account to offset your tu tuition and supplementary fees. The balance of your funding package will be paid to you when you arrive. So if there are leftover funds, if, there, if you have more scholarship money than your first term tuition and fees, you will receive this money once you arrive in Canada and set up your Canadian bank account. And to um, look at your account information, you can um, log on to Mosaic, go to the Student Center tab, and go to the Finances section. So there's two ways to check it. The first way is under My Accounts, under Account Inquiry, and this will show you a balance by term. And the second way is in the drop-down menu called Other Financial Information, select Charges Due, and you will be able to see it as well. So you will not be mailed an invoice or detailed information about your financial account. But if you need a paper copy, you're welcome to go on Mosaic and print out um, an invoice from there. Conditional clearing and deferrals. So if you need to clear your conditions of admission, please, please make sure that you work closely with your program to submit the proper documentation before the deadline. Your conditions of admission are listed in your offer letter and the deadlines are very firm for these conditions to be cleared. If you need to request an extension, if you have your experiencing challenges getting these conditions cleared, please connect with your program as soon as possible. If you wish to defer your enrollment due to environmental reasons or personal reasons, please also connect with your program as soon as possible because each program has different processes and recommendations and it is the best for you to get this information from your program directly. Student life. Now this is what I consider the most exciting part of grad studies and Andrea will tell you all about it. Thanks, Yupei. I'm very happy that I get to explain this part um, to the students. So yes, I'm going to talk a little bit about Student Life, uh, which is a team, as Yupei described, within the School of Graduate Studies um, that organizes events throughout the year and provides you with helpful resources um, as international students and to all graduate students um, overall. So this could include social events and workshops, orientation activities, and other useful resources to help you succeed. So these events and workshops are really a great way to meet new and returning graduate students and um, get, really get to know the Grad Student Association, which is your association, as well as the IGSA, International Grad Student Association, which JC and um, uh, Sebastian, who's also on the call, uh, are a part of um, as well. It'll give you a chance to meet the staff in the School of Graduate Studies and our, our campus partners and um, allow you to learn more about the resources that are available to you. There are a lot of resources out there and we do our best to um, let, let you know about them. Um, and we also um, try very hard to create opportunities for you to showcase your achievements um, as you come into your graduate um, journey 
Um, so we run things like the three minute thesis competition for those who are in um, a research program. And uh, that allows you to really um, enhance your presentation skills and professional development. So all of these events will be communicated to you through um, a weekly email. Um, it's called The Weekly, and um, other events um, sporadically will come to you direct to your inbox as well. So do keep an eye on your McMaster email account um, to uh, you know, stay on top of all the latest offerings. So a few resources that I do want to draw your attention to in particular. If you go to the Grad Studies website, so gs.mcmaster.ca, you'll see a tab um, called Current Students. And within that tab, um, there's a Grad Student Resources section. And so that section is where we try to really house um, information such as support for creating a great supervisory relationship, um, outlining all of the guidelines around graduate student work and supervision. Um, what are your, uh, what's your role, your rights and responsibilities as a graduate student at different phases? Um, the resources section is also where you'll find information for students with disabilities if you are requiring an accommodation or looking for other types of support um, for a disability. Um, please check out that section um, to learn more about that process. Um, we have supports for your writing goals as graduate students, um, whether you're writing um, a thesis or a major research paper or papers for your course, any type of communications project that you have, um, there's support for you, um, a variety of support for you available if you check out that section. And we try to provide um, career and professional development opportunities as well. So again, these will be communicated to you through the mailer, um, but sometimes um, the supports that are sort of um, ongoing and um, always there, it's good to just keep an eye and scroll through that resources section from time to time as well. And so we do have some offerings for you for fall 2020 orientation. Um, we're planning events to take place through out late August to mid September. Um, one of the events um, will be um, called graduate research rounds and this is organized by our campus partner, um, the library. Um, and uh, what they're doing is organizing sessions for you to get to know all of the different services within the library itself. It's actually quite extensive. Um, and so you'll get to meet um, the staff there and hear more about how to use um, the library effectively. Um, we'll have a workshop uh, about graduate writing skills so you can get to know that service. Uh, we'll have a wellness workshop from the Student Wellness Center. Um, there's a place called the Mc, uh, McPherson Teaching and uh, McPherson Institute who put on a teaching and learning forum for any students who are interested in teaching classroom instruction either as a teaching assistant or in the future. Uh, and uh, we'll have an event called Planting Roots which is to build community uh, with uh, two-spirit, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, and queer and questioning graduate students as well. That'll take place in September. Um, of course, um, welcome events for international graduate students uh, like yourselves and there'll be a social organized as well to help to build community and help students to get to know each other. And we're also organizing a resource scavenger hunt to give you a chance to navigate um, these different resources as well and you'll have the chance to be entered into a draw for a prize. Um, so um, these will be coming out to you um, through email, posted on our website as well. So definitely stay tuned for more information about how to register and take advantage of those great um, offerings too. That was all I had for student life section for now. All right, thank you, Andrea. Um, so in this section, I will talk briefly about working in Canada and what you need to work in Canada. So in order to work in Canada and be employed here, you must have a social insurance number and a Canadian bank account. So the exact condition of your work allowance will be outlined on your study permit. So this is determined by the Canadian, Canadian government and um, it will outline um, the exact conditions of how much you can work and, um, and other 
requirements. According to the School of Graduate Studies academic calendar, you may work up to an average of 10 hours on campus for campus employment. So this includes TA ship. In order to get your social insurance number, you will need to apply online. There's no fee to apply and um, under normal circ circumstances, you will have the opportunity to opportunity to apply in person at Service Canada locations or at the airport, but unfortunately these offices are currently closed. So you will need to apply online or by mail. Um, online is highly recommended because it's more efficient, uh, it's more secure, and by mail you will need to mail out your original passport and other documentations. So if you're able to apply online when you arrive in Canada, please do so. So for more information about the process and the link to apply online, um, you may visit the link listed. getting paid, enrolling in direct deposit. So direct deposit is how we transfer money from McMaster to you. To you. If, when you arrive in Canada, your payments for scholarship and employment will be deposited directly into your Canadian bank account. And depending on the types of payments you receive, you may have to enroll in two places. So the first place is your Mosaic Student Center. So this is for um, scholarship money and money that goes through the school. And the second place is Human Resources. So it's a paper form and this is the money that you will receive as your employment income, so TAs. If your Canadian bank account is not yet active when before your first payment, we will generate a check. Normally, you would be able to pick up this check at the School of Graduate Studies, but um, during um, when we're not in the office, we will, we're still in process of figuring out a way to distribute this check if relevant. And for more information, you may visit the Human Resources website at McMaster. So um, teaching assistantship. So during COVID, the COVID times, there are some additional information about teaching assistantship. So if you're not in Canada, unfortunately we cannot offer TA opportunities because you will not be able to get your social insurance number in Canadian bank account. However, the TA and RA opportunities outlined in your offer is still valid. So once you arrive in Canada, your program will do their best, will um, arrange TA um, opportunities in the winter term and or in the summer term to fulfill the, um, the offer that we have in your offer letter. And now I will pass the mic on to Anna to talk to you about your health and wellness resources. Thank you, Yufei. Great, so uh, UHIP is the mandatory health insurance plan for all international students. That would be uh, for international grad, undergrad, visiting and any exchange students that come to McMaster. Um, the coverage period is from September 1st to August 31st of any year. Um, as for first time students who are arriving in Canada, so we do know that you usually arrive a little bit earlier. Um, I'm talking about a non-COVID year. Uh, students usually apply, uh, arrive a little bit earlier so that they can look for some housing. So because of that, the plan actually starts for you as the 10th of August or later, depending whatever day that you arrive, whatever date is later, that would be when it would start. Um, but you will not have a proof of coverage to show if you have to go to the doctor or hospital because technically the plan will start on September 1st. Um, that just means that uh, you'll have to keep all your receipts and then in September you can connect with me and, and I can help you submit your claim to the insurance company so that it can be paid for. Uh, just do make sure that whatever you are claiming that it is actually covered under the UHIP um, plan. So you can check our website at iss.mcmaster.ca and you can get more information there about what UHIP plan actually pays. So this year, starting September 1st, the coverage, uh, like I mentioned, it's a 12 month coverage and it's $720 uh, per student uh, per year. So that works out to $60 per month. 
Um, you can add dependence to the plan. Um, actually, I should say it's mandatory to add your de uh, dependence to the plan. So for one dependent, the price would be 1,440 for the 12 months. And for two dependents, it would be 2,160. So what's good about this plan is it does not charge any more after the third dependent. So let's say it's you, a spouse, and a child. You only pay for those three people. If you have more children, um, they will not be, there will not be an extra charge, but they will be covered just the same as you are. Next. So as I mentioned before, there are some things that are not covered under the UHA plan. So those would be things like vision, dental, prescription medication um, that are not covered. But those are covered for you under a different plan that you are also enrolled in. So if you are a grad student, you have a supplementary health and dental plan through the GSA. And if you are uh, an MBA student, then you also have a supplementary health and dental through the MSU. For grad students, your coverage even breaks up a little, a little bit more. If you are a TA or an RA, your dental plan would move over to QP, but your health plan stays under the GSA. This sounds very confusing and it is a little bit confusing with insurance, but do not worry. In September, we will be having workshops or webinars in this case, where both plans, both me and the GSA will be present and we'll go into what actually is covered for students more into detail. Uh, and just note, I don't know if there's any exchange or visiting students uh, listening, but uh, you are not covered either through the MSU or the GSA. You are only covered under the UHIP plan. Next. So this is what your UHIP card looks like. Um, you, once you are enrolled, you don't have to do anything uh, to be enrolled. That is done on my end. So once you are enrolled, you will receive an email from Sun Life to your McMaster email. So it is very important that your McMaster email is active and that it is not being forwarded to another email. Um, that part is very, very important because as you can see, this card is just a simple printout and there's no photo ID. So in order to avoid any fraud, uh, that may come with this card. Uh, it will only be dropped in your McMaster inbox. So if your inbox is forwarded somewhere else, you will not be able to get that email as it will stay in your McMaster email. So please make sure um, that it is active um, and don't have the forward feature on in September. I mean, you can do it afterwards. Just remember each year in September or late August, remove the forward feature so that it can be dropped into your McMaster inbox. There are some exceptions that have been pre-approved by Sun Life, uh, which is the uh, insurance provider for UHIP. So if you have any of these plans that are listed here, if you have these plans now, or if you become eligible for these plans throughout your uh, journey at McMaster, it is your responsibility to connect with me to let me know that you have any one of these plans. If you do have any one of these plans, you do not need UHIP as they are equivalent, um, and therefore we would be exempting you. Uh, with UHIP, it is very time sensitive. So let's say that you are eligible for these plans as of right now, and you don't tell me until December. Um, I cannot guarantee that I can get you back a full refund because I should have known in September. So every student will be charged for 12 months of coverage. It is up to you to make sure you connect with me to let me know if you have any of these plans so that we can exempt you from UHIP. So I did mention before, I mentioned dependents. So who are your dependents? Um, it is your spouse and your children. It is not your parents or your siblings or cousins or anybody else that comes to visit you. So it is just spouse and or children. Um, and they will be added to the plan once they're physically in Ontario with you. Especially now with COVID, you might have a plan that they are to arrive um, in a few months after you or a few weeks after you. But as of right now, since there are still so many flights being canceled, um, I do not need to know what the plan is in terms of when they might be coming. I just need you to connect with me once they are physically in Ontario. So once they are here, please connect with me. You have 30 days to connect with me from their arrival date to add them. If you pass those 30 days, there is a $500 late fee addition per member that we add, and the charges are retro from the date that they arrive. So I'll give you an example. Um, we, start, we start our academic term in September. If they arrive in September and you do not let me know until December that they have arrived, it will be an additional $500 per person, plus it will charge you back uh, until uh, back from September onwards in terms of premiums. So it is very, very important that you please let me know that they're here. Um, 
I'm not sure if you know, but healthcare in Canada is very, very expensive. You do not want to end up with a massive bill from a hospital or a walk-in clinic. So please connect with me. It is in your best interest to connect with me and connect with me as soon as they arrive. So right now, since of COVID, since we are not at McMaster, as Yufei has stated, uh, please send me an email with your student number, uh, your dependent's uh, passport photo page, and their flight itinerary once they arrive so that I can add them to the UHA plan. So there are some updates due to COVID. Um, so the UHA plan is made for people who are living in Ontario. Uh, and when I say it's made for people who are living in Ontario, I mean that the prices in terms of healthcare are all around what our prices are in Ontario. Therefore, if you are not physically in Ontario, once September comes, um, all students will still be enrolled in charge for 12 months of coverage. In early September, you will be receiving an email from me that will ask you where you are. If you are not in Ontario, I will be able to exempt you from the plan for the fall term. So you will not be paying into this plan, which also means you will not have any coverage. But again, if you're not in Canada or in Ontario, it's not beneficial to you anyways, as you are not able to use it, as it is not a travel plan. It is based for in Ontario. If you, um, let's say COVID gets better and it is stated that January 2021 is in person, if you arrive in November for that January start, please don't wait until January to connect with me to let me know that you have arrived. Let me know the moment you arrive that you are here so that we can add you onto the UHIP plan as soon as possible so that you are also covered. Um, again, healthcare is very, very expensive. We don't wanna get into any troubles with the hospitals and, and large amounts of money that have to be paid. So please, once you are here, uh, connect with me so that I can add you. If things do not get better with COVID and it ends up that we are online for the winter term, then again, you will be getting an email from me at that time if we are online, and then most likely you will be exempt again from the winter term because you are not in Ontario. Great, thank you, Anna. Uh, and now I will pass the mic on back to JC again, and JC will introduce us to some community resources that are available to all graduate students. Okay, thanks, Yufei. Okay, so there will be a lot of information, and I'll try to make it as clear and precise as I can. Um, but so I will first start with the support that is available at McMaster University. And that is more support that is given by the, administra the administration uh, at McMaster University. So the first point of contact that you will have is your department. That's a day-to-day uh, -day interaction that you'll have with them. So that's really important that these people know you. So one thing I always recommend is introduce yourself to the grad chair. Introduce yourself to the secretaries. Just make sure that they know who you are because that makes that makes everything easier afterwards. If they need to reach out to you, they know exactly who you are. So the first thing I did when I came here is I went to the secretaries and I introduced myself and they helped me getting everything set up. So that's, that, that's really useful. And that's one thing I recommend everybody should be doing. Then there is the School of Graduate Studies, which um, Yufei and Andrea are part of. Um, so you will have to, in, to interact with them at some point in during uh, your stay at McMaster University because they deal with admission, graduation, PhD defenses. Uh, they organize a lot of events. So I really recommend again that you participate in those events and you know who is working for the School of Graduate Studies and how you can reach out to them. Then there's the international student uh, services that Anna is part of. Again, it, you're really likely to interact with Anna because of you at first. I mean, you, you will have, you will interact with Anna for sure. Uh, and then there are other people, uh, the immigration consultant is part of ISS, the student uh, success coach is part of ISS. So again, make sure you know what, what is available through the ISS. There is another entity that is called Modal. Uh, and Modal will be very helpful to you if you are having uh, difficulties with the uh, English language. So if you're having trouble, you know, writing an essay, if you're having trouble presenting your research, uh, they have workshops, they have, uh, I think they have one-on-one -on -one appointments where they can help you write your improving your writing skills, your presentation skills. So make sure you check out their website uh, because they, they might be uh, very, very helpful. Then there's the Student Accessibility uh, Services, SAS. Uh, they provide academic accommodations, assistance, 
and support for students with disabilities. And then finally, there's the Student Wellness Center. Um, so they can help you if you have any physical uh, or mental wellness uh, needs. So that's one place you can go if you're sick, even though I'm not sure how that works right now uh, with COVID, uh, but uh, I'm sure there's some information on the website. Then now I'm just gonna talk to you about what's um, available, but it, now it's more on the student side. So those groups are run by students for the students. So the first association that you're part of just because you're a graduate student is the GSA, the Graduate Student Association. Um, they will deal with uh, health and uh, dental coverage. They will put on sport leagues. They own the Phoenix restaurant, which is the restaurant that we have on campus. They have grad student clubs, they have social events. So again, uh, every week you should get a mailer from them with every single event that they organize. So make sure you check out those emails so that it, it can help you getting involved with the community. Then the International uh, Graduate Student Association. So I'm one of the co-presidents, Sebastian, that has been answering the questions in the background with everybody else, is the other co-president. Uh, there's the Facebook page here. You can ask to be added to the group and then uh, that's where we post our events. But we also usually send out emails when we have specific events. We don't send a mailer, but we usually, when, whenever we have an event, we'll, we'll send an email. Uh, again, because none of it will be in person, I strongly recommend that you try to join us. Even if you're not a Mac yet, uh, make sure you join us for the events and you introduce yourself. It's a really good way to get involved uh, with the international graduate student uh, community. And then there are other groups. There are the MacMaster grad parents. So obviously if you're parents, that might be good to talk to other parents. Um, there is the engineering grad students uh, association. So if you're part of the engineering faculty, there's an association that is um, geared up to fix, answer issues that engineering students may have and also organize events. So check out their website. Then there is the SAI Grad Student Association, so it's the equivalent of engineering grad uh, students, but for the people in science. And then finally, there's the African Caribbean Grad Students Association. We work in collaboration with them uh, pretty often because we have one of our member that is also part of the African Caribbean Grad Student Association. And can you, yeah, okay, great, thank you. Uh, and then, yet other resources. So now if you're a TA, then you have one more, um, you have other resources. So if you're a TA, you're automatically covered by the union that is called QP 3906. Um, so they will protect you under the collective agreement. So um, not every year, but very often they negotiate the rate that we're paid for TAing. Uh, they will take care of the health, uh, some of the health plans. So for example, dental, if you're a TA, the dental is covered. Uh, by QP and not GSA anymore. And they also have an international officer, so they will have also some events. And then finally, there's another group that is now off campus, so it's not specific to McMaster University. It's called uh, Global Hamilton Connect. So they have a lot of resources for international students or just people that just arrived in Canada. So it's really, you can definitely go on their website. They have, they have events downtown as well, sometimes. Okay, that's it. I think that's it for me. Thank you. Yeah, great. Thank you, JC. Um, of course, they're going back to uh, McMaster. We have also have upcoming events as well. Um, after today's webinar, we have two more two student panel Q and A's scheduled on July twenty second and August fifth. So during those events, we will have students, uh, current students like JC here, to answer your questions based on their experiences. And this is usually a very fun event where you can ask current students about their experience at McMaster, and I highly encourage you to attend. And of course, as Andrea mentioned earlier, there are orientation events scheduled throughout August and early and throughout September as well. And once details and dates about these events are ready, you will also hear about them through email as well. And this concludes the presentation part of our webinar for today. If you have any questions, please post them in the question and answer boxes and uh, I will try to answer these questions live 
And if not, you can always reach us at askgrad at mcmaster.ca.